What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If this is your first time joining us on the show, welcome to the show. Man, we got a good one for you today. Like my man Steve Harvey say, it's Jim Gaffigan. Come on. One of the most iconic comedians uh, of all time. Such an incredible joke writer. Such a genius. Uh, Watch his new special that's out right now. He's a comedy monster, and that's the facts. His special's out right now on Netflix. On Netflix. As it were, he is a brilliant comedian. I love this dude. So smart, so funny, so cool. Right now, you want to come see me? You want to see this uh, this ginge, this young buck? Uh, Right now, this weekend, I'm in Atlanta and D.C. Atlanta, come on, let's go. I'm here right now, D.C., tomorrow night, Atlanta and D.C. Uh, The rest of the tour dates, Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago, February 5th, Chicago Theater. Let's go. I'm so excited. Seattle, Portland, Vancouver, Albany, uh, Foxwoods Casino, uh, Green Bay with Chrissy D, and then Vegas. We're adding dates as we go. Go to andrewsantino.com for the tickets, andrewsantino.com to come see Support Your Boy right now. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell. Gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it sincerely once again today. It's Mr. Jim Gaffigan. Well, thank you so much. Jim, thank you so much for being here. It's, uh, it's, this is a nice meeting of recessive genes here, right? It is. Are you from a long line of us? I, um, I'm mostly, uh, there's some blonde here and there. Not, you know, my mom was blonde. I have a sister that has my coloring, but... A lot of redheads in your family? Just my grandmother. And so- I'm the only one. My mother is one of 10 children. And- None of them. One uh, of them had a little bit when he was a kid. But like, just, you know, you're a deformity. Yeah, I'm a freak. But look at how bright mine is. Was yours ever this obnoxious? No, but like when you were a boy, it was super bright, right? It was gross. I was always a towhead. I was always white blonde. Yeah, you're like, you're a halfie. I'm kind of, uh, but I feel like it's- I'm an unofficial redhead in a way. Well, the Irish side of you gets the pass, but you're like, we wouldn't let you into one of the functions, but we no. would respect you because of your, you because know. Because I'm an outcast. You're outcast. Yeah, your outcastness. And your gait. You walk like someone who isn't of the normal right. species. It, so was the ginger thing, it was not always a thing, or was it always a thing in your lifetime? Always was a thing in my lifetime, but I used to call, I used to get called, um, Opie. I went to a school Opie. in Chicago, yeah. um, LaSalle. And in all, what, the 50s? Is that why they called uh, you Opie? 38, 1938 to 30, <laughs> 30. I went to 38, 39, I was there. No, they used to call me, all the black kids would call me Opie. Hey, what's up, Opie? Because they're, they knew Andy Griffith. Because, because someone of the in reruns. Their, because of the reruns were always on yeah. like WGN. But I get called Opie a lot when I was a kid. Wow. Opie was a big one. And then Howdy Doody. Howdy Doody. Very, uh, you know, a confidence building experience. Mm-hmm. Um, Raggedy Ann and Andy, look, 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 go Andy. And I, my name is Andrew, which is, it makes it even worse. Yeah. Wow. It was bad. It was, uh, but I either fought kids that said it, I either would punch people, yeah. or I would joke my way out of it. And it sounds cheap, but it really was my. When you were in high school, did you, t- did you sound how you sound right now? Or were you kind of like, I'm from, I'm from Southside Chicago? No, 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 no. I sound we, exactly uh, how we, I sound. Did you, you didn't talk all the way. I like didn't have a, like a Seb- Sebastian when I talk like this. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, Sebastian's from a Scorsese movie. He's not even from Chicago. No, he, he, he was a, he's an animated character that they turned into real action, real live action. Like uh, I've Chicago. been, I've been around forever, and like Sebastian is killing it, and mm-hmm. I couldn't be happier for him. But you hate him, and you've said but, that on a lot of shows. No, no, but there's so many. Like he is the Italian American comedian. What he does, he's the best. But yeah. there has been versions that probably thought they were going to be Sebastian. Uh huh. Well, did you see one time uh, Dice uh, Dice Clay went after him? Do you know this? Really? No. Oh, it was why? wild. You have to look it up. Sebastian, why would you go after Sebastian? Well, he, I guess Sebastian used to open for Dice years ago. Oh, really? I think. Don't I don't want to be super wrong, but w- whatever the case may be, Dice put on his Instagram one time um, something to the effect of like 
this guy's stealing my act anyway. <laughs> and it was like, the irony is staggering because Sebastian is this Italian kid from Chicago. Right. So, and, that, and of course it's inflated. It's, ca- it's a caricature of yeah. what Chicago people are. But also Dice is a, a Jewish guy from Jersey. Well, he's so it's kind of a stretch yeah. to to be like that's my character. It's like his is so obviously his right. character, right? I see what you're saying that you guys sound, you guys have similar, you know, this kind of thing. But uh, come on, I, it's not. Oh my god! But he went after him, and then I think he recanted it because I feel like maybe he felt bad that it because it was unnecessary, and I don't think Sebastian said a word about it. I don't yeah. know why he why oh, why would he care? So when you were in Chicago mm-hmm. and you did not start there, I started here. And, but, so I'm from Chicagoland. I'm from Northwest Indiana. I'm I know a region, right? Elgin. No, well, I was born in Elgin, but. Where did you yeah. live, live then? I lived in Barrington. Okay. And then I lived in Munster, Indiana and Chesterton, Indiana. Yeah. Indiana so, boys, man. Yeah. Cigarettes and gas were always cheap there. A lot of, uh, you know, I would do zanies and there would be a lot of people that would come from the region and uh i could tell because it would be saturday night and they'd be wearing sweatpants <laughs> i'd be like all right thanks for dressing up <laughs> but those are my people did you start at zany's no i started in new york city okay and um but you know when i was headlining in uh i don't know if you encountered this when you would go back to chicago i mean now it's a different thing with like the weed and everything but when i would do shows at zany's I, afterwards, I'd be like, hey, why didn't you kick out those people that were yelling? And they'd be like, because they were your guests. That's your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> That's your brother and his friends. And I'm like, ah, yeah, I guess so. All right. That's exactly what it is. I'm going right. to play for the first time in my career. Uh, I'm playing the Chicago Theater February 5th. Amazing. Big deal for big yeah. deal for the old boy. And um, my guest list is, no, I'm not kidding, it's no short of 200 people. I have no, I mean like. You got to do a party downstairs. Do I? Yes. But all these, I, all these, some well, of these family doing, members I don't want there. You no. just do it. You just do no, it. I and know. you do it after. But like the Chicago theater. Yeah. I mean, growing Huge. up, I would take the South Shore uh, train into Chicago and walking by the Chicago theater. My one joke that I always do, I'm like, I would walk, because I would do it when I would do the Chicago theater, I'd be like. That's the theater where the band Chicago live. <laughs> it's like it's shows you how old I am. But um, yeah, no, the Chicago theater and people are excited to be there too. Yeah, no, it's well because it's kind of an event, and I do feel like what is missing in no joke in comedy clubs. Comedy clubs kind of do give this feeling that like um, you know you can schlub it up, but the theater people always dress up a little bit nicer. It, oh yeah, it's so nice. You're like, oh look at them coming to see me wearing good clothes. It's nice when somebody gets to wear uh, something a little bit more flashy. I think it makes you feel more professional a little yeah. bit. Comedy well, they clubs love, doesn't matter. They love the experience too. It's a night out. Yeah. yeah. It's like we're going to the Chicago Theater, which is very cool. They got the babysitter. And all. Do you know Tim Dillon, by the way? Yeah. He's calling yeah. me right now. Yeah. We should well, put let's, him on why is he calling me? Or is he babysitting for ba- you? Tim, are you ba- Tim, Tim, I'm on the podcast right now with Jim Gaffigan. Say hi. What the fuck? Oh, wow. Jim Gaffigan, fucking the best. His special is amazing. It oh, is. Thank you. Com- are you smoking monster. right now, Tim? Wait, what, what did you say? He said, "Are you smoking right now?" No, I'm. I'm eating a turkey meatloaf right now. But I a turkey a meatloaf. On the table like you, you make it mouth. sound like there's like four in a serving. I'm <laughs> yeah. eating just one. Turkey one of the turkey meatloaf. meatloafs. <laughs> like, did you get it from a diner? Did you get the whole meatloaf or just a <laughs> portion no, it's, of it? It's from Bristol Farms. It's a really oh, yeah. high-end grocery store in LA. That's why living in Austin didn't work. They don't have good groceries. That's correct. They well, don't. Well, by the way, don't. congratulations, Tim. Uh, the big feature in the Daily Beast. Uh, uh, your interview with Joe. I was watching some of it. That's pretty huge. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Is it good? I didn't even. No, know it's about great. That. It's great. I'm sure. <laughs> it's great. Can you act more humble? Let's try that again. We'll edit this. Oh, geez, I didn't even know. Oh, it was on. Even, it was on I that didn't... platform of all the people that I make a career out of antagonizing. I haven't even noticed. <laughs> Tim. Yeah, that's what I mean. I gotta. Ch- I'll have to check it out. But th- I thank you. I, I mean, we'll no, it's a good trying. interview too. Well, I want. I'm. I want to call. The interview is good. I put. You know, we we push back. I've gotten vaccinated 19 times. Right. Did you get Joe? Va- did you get? Did you get Joe boosted? Did you give him the boost? 
No, I mean, he's not, he's not getting the boost, but again, you know, he's not an overweight smoker. I mean, like, you know, I got, I got vaccinated as soon as they allowed me to get vaccinated. I got in a car and drove to a hospital in LA. I was like, okay, now I can go to dinner. Right. Yeah. Well that you can't, you don't want to mess up that whole thing. Tim, yeah. can I, can I make Tim, an I observation you before you leave yeah. Los Angeles? What's that? What'd you say? I hope, I hope to see you before you leave LA. He wants yeah. to see you before you leave. It's well, not yeah, happen. no. Well, you, uh, you. Last night I was talking to Spade. You had a conversation, uh, Tim. I, I do want to bring up an observation, and maybe this is one of your jokes. You sound like you just came from a yelling match with some neighbor. Like you always, your voice sounds like. You know what I told that guy? He keeps letting his dog shit in my yard, and I let him have it, honey. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're the dad yeah. that's just like coming down from just ranting at a neighbor. Right. That's yeah. you, you've got yeah, you're a fight with the neighborhood council. Somebody described me once, you're like you're like a Long Island baseball dad who's had it. Yeah, who's who's sick of it. Yeah. The yeah, ump the the ump has been fucking up all game, missing calls. Yeah. You've lost it. You didn't embarrass your son, you embarrassed yourself, but you'll move forward. Tim, is it yeah, true I mean, that they're I have that perpetual sound of rage is is it true that they're considering you to host the academy awards is that true i mean they i haven't it up. heard it but i have some very great agents over there at caa that i'm sure yeah can make it happen not, I, I, mean, I think it's by the way there's there uh, everyone everyone in this conversation has the conversation with the agents where they're like you know what they're there it could be as a happening whole. and you're like it's not gonna happen they're like well you know what i uh, you never know i want to build you up so that you don't call me for work for two months <laughs> so i'm just saying I'm, yeah well listen jim i hope to see you i'll be at the store in the improv this week so maybe okay. we'll all right tim i'll call you sure. after See ya. All, All right, right thanks, buddy. Brother. Bye. One of the best. One yeah, they, the best. they he's opened like up the Jim Gaffigan of comedy. He's more like the Brian Regan, yeah. I think. He's yeah. more of a Regan kind of guy. Yeah. You're closer to the Jim Gaffigan than I think you think you are. Yeah. You're and there's some of that. A little. You have a touch of it. But so let's talk about. So you grew up in what? Cabrini Green? In, I was on the 15th floor. 15th floor. Mm -hmm. You're one of 10 kids. Mm <laughs> hmm. No, what? So where no, did, I'm you, one of, did you grow up in Beverly? No, I grew up <laughs> Beverly. I grew up. I grew up in what is affectionately called uh, River North. Yeah, yeah, old town and near Zanies. Yeah. I lived right over there, Clark Division. I lived oh, on that's Dearborn. It's fancy up there. It's fancy that's boy. Fancy up there. But the irony was, I grew up in subsidized housing. My mom was a single mom, and we had Section Eight in really like so nice buildings. You know, they have to have certain units of Section Eight. And you're this very intelligent kid, mm. and your mom was like, he's going to be fine. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to go and be a filthy comic. A, a dirtbag. Well, I got kicked out of Moody Bible. Mo shout out to Moody Bible. Really? Got kicked out. What do you mean kicked out? Is that a, I don't even know what that means. They remove you from their curriculum. You're not, you're, you are not allowed to go to school there anymore. I got asked to leave politely. My mother, my, the, one of the nuns. Is Moody Bible, is that a Catholic school? Yes. Yeah. It's okay. right. You know where, Jim, do you know anything? I it's just. <laughs> It's right across from Second City. Do you ever go to oh, Second wow. City? Ever? In the city? I went and saw a show there. Yeah, it's right across the street. It's a big church right on the corner right there. It's a church and a school. But I got asked to leave for being violent and disruptive. I was a little fighter. I was a little bad boy. You were a bad boy. I was a little bad boy. See, I don't see you as a violent type, but mm, like... You get to know me, it gets you bad. Grow, you, so you have a temper. I can't. I think I've calmed it down now in, in my... As I've grown... Uh, out of a lot of the shit I was angry about, I think it just slowly goes away. It's like how, you know how Burr kind yeah. of slowly pushed it away? It was really hot at one point. I don't know. I minute. feel like, uh, you know, I love He could Bill still Burr. snap. By the way, I knew Bill Burr when he was Billy Burr. I know. You know, you know? Yeah, you know, I didn't, but Eddie from the improv, Eddie the bartender at the improv, he used to always say that. He's like, man, you got the same energy as Billy Burr. And I thought he was being condescending. But he's like, yeah. no, 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 we used, we called him Billy Burr. This whole Bill Burr thing was new. That's what he yeah. said. I never had heard that before. I remember when Jeff Ross was Jeff Lifschultz. Lifschitz. Yeah, Lifschultz. Yeah, Lifschultz. that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Why didn't he keep that? A stage name. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Lifschultz. When he did Letterman, I think he was Jeff Lifschultz. You know, you, for us, the only reason to do a stage name is if your name is tough to pronounce. And I get Lifschultz is kind of, you yeah. know, Ross is quicker. But Gaffigan's a good name. You're lucky you it's got a good bad. name. No, you got a name. great name. Did you quit smoking? 
I uh, about thirty years ago. And you're st- and you're doing those things I'm still. Still doing. Do it. they work? Apparently not. Yeah. Um. A little. <laughs> All right, so what do you miss the most about Chicago? This is my segue of talking about I, pizza. I like it. I'm going to um, pour you a little bit. Do you want to have yeah, a little sure. sauce? Yeah, what, right. is, what is, so you, these are all these different kinds. Just different kinds of, of What's jazz. What's the most expensive one? Well, this is Blanton's. This is tough to get your fingers oh, on. Oh, yeah. People don't, people don't like that oh, I have yeah. this. So there's, and by the way, if you get all the bottles and you line them up, it looks like a horse race, right? Well, and it also, right there, the, each of these letters spells Blanton's. That's, L, that's an L bottle. Wow. And people collect these. And you, were they bad people, the Blantons, or were, were they good people? You would imagine they were bad, but it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Did they own, are you asking if they own people of any yeah. kind? Well, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what they did. I don't think Tennessee was a big. Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky. Yeah. Well, I think it's too <laughs> hilly. You think it's too hilly to kind of, yeah. to own people? Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you. you. Cheers to me. Look at us. Look at us. I think maybe Kentucky. Yeah, to Kentucky's in the, Kentucky's in the cell. It's right near Indiana. Yeah, well, I was going to say, you have, you got to tell me. Yeah. There's a part of Indiana that was like very Midwest, everything we grew up with, everything I ever knew. And then there was parts of Indiana I would visit, family or friends. It was a little hicky. A little hicky. Oh, yeah. But but it but so much wasn't. What's the dividing line? Well, the thing about Indiana is, um, obviously, I haven't lived there for thirty years. But when I was growing up, this is what I knew, and this is what I've experienced: is that Northwest Indiana, which is Rust Belt, mm-hmm. which is kind of like it's Chicago Lens, same yeah. you know television stations, also same time zone, right? So like. We're part of Central, but the rest of Indiana is Eastern. Mm-hmm. And um, so we're Northwest Indiana is rejected by Indiana and rejected by Chicago. Yeah, we historically. Don't. It so, is like, true. when I'm in Chicago and I say I'm from Northwest Indiana, they're like, Where's that? I'm like, It's 10 minutes away. And they're so, like, Really? It's, a, it's the tip of the lake. They're like, is, isn't that the road to Michigan? I'm like, yeah, well, it is essentially. Because <laughs> people would go on vacation yeah. in Michigan, not in Indiana. No. But uh, so it was a there's a strange identity crisis in Indiana. So even when I perform in Indy, they're all excited that I'm from Indiana, and then they find out I'm from Northwest Indiana, and they're like, mm. they're kind of bummed about it. Yeah. What's your best market in the Midwest? What do you think you do the best in? I don't know. It's you know. Is I there was, one you like the most? I like them all. I mean, I like performing in. Um. All different size cities. So I like, you know, Cedar Rapids. I like Rochester, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I like some of these, you know, uh, not huge cities that are kind of, there's there's a fun, kind of like the smaller towns are almost kind of interesting. Did you feel a different, okay, so listen, because I'm at a point in my career when when I do a smaller city, it's just tougher to get people out. When I do big cities, I can still, I can, I can really do well. Yeah. But so when I go to these cities at this this stage, it almost feels like going backwards if I go to a smaller town because they're harder to get them out. It is did hard. You, you did know, you have w- that? Well, you know, I would think that the podcast thing has replaced morning radio. Like they're used to, I mean, there's still the Bob and Tom show. I'm sure you've been on Bob I've and Tom. I've done that, right? Bob and Tom, yeah. But Bob and Tom used to be, you, if you were on Bob and Tom, you could go anywhere in these yeah, what are considered B and C markets, and so uh, I think it's I think podcasts have kind of weakened uh, terrestrial radio, mm-hmm. but uh, that's how you could do it. So yeah, you it was, should do that. Yeah, I did Bob and Tom, but one of them was mean to me. One, not Bob or Tom, but one of the other guys was was in a bad place, and yeah. he was so mean that the producer wrote me an email. It was like I apologize about that, but he stepped on like every joke, and it felt so weird. And I was like, that guy had must have had a bad day. It is weird. The vibe was you know, so off. It's like, I mean, I remember doing morning radio, and I don't know if you ever encountered this, where you would get there and they would just make you wait to make you wait. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> absolutely. you're out here for like 45 minutes, and you're like, what? It's 6 a.m., you're already they're, tired. They're, what are they talking about that I have to wait? Right. And... Yeah, so it's the morning radio stuff. Was, it's exhausting. I'm glad a, I don't do it anymore. To be there's honest, there's a lot of there's a lot of shit eating. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's where your podcast, 
you know, it's it's got to be exciting. It so supplements like, it for sure. And do you know which cities are listening, or is it you just find out base numbers? No, we get. I mean, we have the the we find out the analytics of like where people are the most. That does help sometimes with like cities I pick, you know, but. Also, there's cities that's blew my mind. There are yeah. cities that I've gone to that I'm like, I had no idea that this many people like I put up tickets for Seattle and Portland and I guess I hadn't played in either of those cities in a couple of years before COVID. I hadn't been there in a no. year or two. And it sold, you know, sold out within a second. And I I just was like, Why wow. Seattle and Portland? I have no those are great comments. They are, but I just was surprised. Comments. And then there's certain cities where you're like, how come I can't sell a ticket here? I don't yeah. know. It, it was like it's a grind. You and know? What about internationally? Is your cause some podcasts are just like, like uh, that's where I'm really jealous is like Australia, because like if mm-hmm. you know when you talk about these smaller towns, it's like they don't know who you are. It's like Australia, the UK. It's like I feel like I'm making inroads in Canada, but like, so is this podcast big in Australia? Like I know that Segura. Yeah, you know, we have you're... enough. In, in, we have enough fans in S- Australia where I've been asked a lot to go down there, and I've never. I want to go. Yeah, but I, I just—it's such a hard. That's a big commitment to go down there. When I'm like, commitment. I can do the states and do the states and the states and the states, and then at some point, I poke up in Canada. I have yet to be brave enough to go down there or to Europe. I haven't done Europe at all. Yeah, you've done Europe. Yes, but it's it's you know like it's essentially breaking even when I go um, anywhere outside of. Uh, you mean North financially? America. It's just not really. Yeah, a, yeah. It's you know Australia. It's so expensive to get there. Yeah, it's like f- so. 50 grand just a one-way ticket. But that's also because you take your own private jet and you want no one else on it. Right. I rent out a United Airlines and they're like, we don't even fly to Australia. I'm like, and then I just put down $1 bills and they're like, that's not enough. And then I have to go through 50000 Until you finally get there. And they're like, that's still not enough. And so then I have to go through <laughs> another. <laughs> and then finally they're like, at they're some like, point. They're like, fine, we have this guy that's going there anyway. Ah, uh, Jim Jeffries. He's yes. heading down that way. Yes. So he'll just scoop you up. Yes. Do you do you, this is a rumor and you you may know if it's true or not. Yeah. I had heard that Seinfeld when he does gigs flies back same night on a jet, won't stay in the city. Is this fake? Have you heard this before? It's so funny. I remember hearing that about um uh who is the uh guy um Jimmy Buffett. I hearing and Jimmy Buffett flew himself. Oh, because he's a pilot. Oh, right. Yeah, he's a pilot. Why, of course he's a Those pilot. Those people are weirdos. The like, people if that are you're pilots. Like, yeah. You don't need to do that. No. <laughs> Why would you want to? Aren't it's you like, exhausted? It's like, you know what? I'm gonna Then I'm going to drive the tour bus. You know, it's like, you don't have to. <laughs> no, I like to. But no, um, no I don't think that's true. See, I, somebody had sold that to, told that to me that he enjoyed leaving the night of on a jet and well, not I staying think in the he's. I think if he's in the Northeast, he probably does. Yeah, but I'm saying uh, the rumor was it was any. It didn't matter where he was. He'd rather be on a jet going back home than staying in That's the city. That's so funny. That's totally what I heard about uh, Jimmy Buffett. Well, it sounds like both of these guys. First of all, both are very capable of doing it. Yeah, but the Jimmy one's better because he flew himself. Yes, I used to sail myself. I would do a gig. You if would, it was near water, I would sail back around like Michigan. Mm-hmm. I like, would sail right. right across. Like you would do. You're <laughs> like, oh, I got a show in Mackinac. Mackinac Island, baby. <laughs> it's like it's like a long sailing. It's particularly if the wind's not there. There's no, almost no wind. Sometimes. And you're on a laser. You're mm-hmm. on a laser ship. Yeah, I don't even know what they're. I, I it's see. a laser. Yeah, it's, it's called a, a laser. tiny little laser. So like you're you don't feel like a government housing. You feel like you know some of this stuff. I like, don't. You don't know. I'm not a smart man, but I re- I'm really good at being a chameleon. And a chameleon. and I was I'm always see, monkey see monkey do. If you do something, yeah. I can pay enough attention to it. I can do it. So with language, articulation, I just learned. I'm not. I'm not saying we grew up uh, in the slums. We grew up in like nice apartment high rises. My mother worked for one of the companies that property managed them, and then we yeah. got to live for cheap in these fancy pantsy right. houses. So interesting. it's wild. Yeah. Did you ever vacation to Wisconsin? Were you one of us? I. Um, it's so interesting. I didn't. My my wife is from Wisconsin, but I was never. We never went to Wisconsin. Really? And I love Wisconsin too. That's so, Chicago's play plan, play playpen. I mean, that's yeah. like that's where we go. We go trash yeah. their lakes and come back. Yeah. You didn't do. Where do you guys go to trash lakes? Well, we would go to. You know, there's a lake called Lake Michigan. 
Yeah, but that's it's so daunting. We like little small ones that we can ruin. Like little small ones that Yeah, like Lake Delavan. Yeah, Lake Geneva. Lake Geneva, yeah. That's a fun one to trash. Where is that? Wisconsin. That's right across the border. It's up up north across the Illinois Wisconsin border. That's what we Where's your wife from? Uh Milwaukee. What a city. Right? I love I Milwaukee. I have always said how much I love Milwaukee. Which is interesting because I think do you remember uh, when uh like Jonathan Brandmeier? Do you remember him? No, who's that? Oh my God, you're too young to know who Jonathan Brandmeier is. Is he a comic? Is? No, he was a radio DJ. There was like, I rem- you don't even know who Steve Dahl is, do you? The name is familiar for Steve some reason. Steve Dahl did the disco demolition, but he was the uh, equivalent of Howard Stern when I was a kid. Oh, he was huge. He was gigantic, Steve and Gary, and they were very funny and very kind of rude in the morning. It was back, you know, it's so funny because then eventually I did his podcast. He's got one now. This was probably 10 years ago. And I was like, I can't believe I'm doing, and I texted my brothers. I'm like, I'm doing Steve Dahl's podcast. But isn't that nice when you're a kid, that thing that means a lot to you when you're a kid? Even if people don't get it now, you're like, you wouldn't, when I was a kid, it was so huge. You know, like, uh, oh, you know, you know, the radio DJ that I've, uh, that I knew that was Rick Dees, you know, Rick Dees. Oh, yeah. Huge. I mean, he was like the king. And yeah. he's a Midwest guy. I'm almost positive. Is he? Yeah. Rick D. Like, he had a, st- he was like that voice, right? Yeah. But Rick now- D's. He had right? like a very, like, yeah, he's great. I know him. I golf with him sometimes. Well, you're, now you're bragging. Well, now I am boasting. I'm going to, I am. You're boasting. But Rick D's 99% of these people, they're never going to know who Rick They're D's. not going to know who Rick But he D's had that beautiful, I always admired radio voices when I was a kid. I love, yeah. people had that, that cadence that was high, came down, Rick D's. You don't know who Paul Harvey is. Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey. I don't H1. know. But we can make up, I can make up what I thought he sounded like. In here, we pour whiskey, whiskey. Hey, do you have balls? Or does someone you love or appreciate or respect or enjoy have balls? I know I do. I got a couple of set of nuts hanging real low. And let me tell you something. You got to keep your balls well-groomed. Pretty, smelling good, feeling good. Uh, This is, uh, it's a new year. It's a new day. And uh, look, I've had a beard for a long time. And uh, I like my beard and I like to keep it in shape. But you don't want a beard on your balls. It's disgusting, okay? You want to clean up dim nuts. Uh, that's why you got to check out Ballsy. What a name. Uh-huh. Ballsy is incredible. They make men's products uh, grooming for your man pots. Uh, it's no secret that balls are prone to order. Stinky. All right. Sweat, irritation. Upgrade your balls game with Ballsy. Quality, long-lasting products formulated to keep you fresh, comfortable, confident. They got really good stuff, man. No uh, no BS ingredients. Ballsy is made from only the good stuff like essential oils and plant extracts. No sulfates, parabens, synthetic dyes, and, of course, no testing on the animals. Uh, dude, when in doubt, go for it all. The The Sack Pack is the ultimate trifecta of products specifically formulated to take care of your most prized possessions. And if you're not sure where to start, take their quiz online, customize, tailored to you, a personal ball sack bag for your ball sack bag. With over 200,000 satisfied customers and a 30-day money-back guarantee, you've got to give Ballsy a try. My balls smell much better because of it. I used it, came in the mail the other day. Boy, oh boy, did my nuts smell good. I was putting them all over my house. I was rubbing them on the couch, tables, chairs, dressers. Told my wife, I was like, smell it. Does, does, how does it smell? She's like, it smells delicious. What did you clean this with? I was like, my balls. My balls, lady. Hey, so uh, keep the funk off your junk right now. Go to ballwash.com slash whiskeyginger20. Ballwash.com slash whiskeyginger20. Put in the promo code whiskeyginger20. You'll receive 20% off. That's 20% off plus free shipping. When you go to ballwash.com slash whiskeyginger20, put in that promo code whiskeyginger20. Hey, everybody likes to get intimate sometimes with somebody and when that moment arrives you got to be ready you got to be roman ready whether you've been in a relationship for years or just getting started having the confidence that comes from preparation means you're free to enjoy the moment when the moment arrives you don't want to be fledging around in your pants trying to smack that thing awake dude even though you are far from ordinary the truth is ed is really common it is very much a 52 percent of guys age 40 to 70 experience some form of ed erectile dysfunction okay Go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey now to speak to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional about erectile dysfunction. Get $15 off your first month of treatment. Here's the deal. A lot of people can't get blood flow down there. It's not that big of a deal, all right? It's not that big of a deal. It happens. But we got the fix now. Comes to your door. The system is completely confidential, totally discreet. No logos or labels on the packages. It delivers to your house quietly. 
You can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and the privacy of your home. U.S. licensed health healthcare professional is going to work with you to find the best treatment plan, and if medication is appropriate, if they say so, it ships to you for free with two-day shipping. Huh? Plan that big night. Plan that big night, big boy. The whole process is straightforward, convenient, and discreet. Uh, getting started is so easy. Go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey. Complete an online visit. Take care of your ED without leaving your home. Complete an online visit today and connect with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional and take care of it, all right? Go to GetRoman.com slash whiskey. GetRoman.com slash whiskey today. If you're prescribed, get $15 off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this fall. Roman ready. Ginger. I like gingers. Wait, uh, 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 the podcast killed the radio star. You just did Rogan. Yes. How was it? Did you have fun over there? Oh, it was so fun. Did he I've give you some it. alpha brain? No, he didn't. He didn't give you all that uh, on it shit? No. When I used to tour with him, he, made, he would be like, you got to have some of this. And I didn't Did want to take it. I don't even know. I don't, you have to be a, a workout fanatic for that stuff to work. You know, it's, I go through different phases. Um, and, uh, but like, I do admire. He gets up. He works out like crazy. Yeah, it's not gonna, I'm not going to do it. And, you know, he's he's holding it all together. What an empire he's built. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Insane. He's like, over here is the horse track I'm going to build. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> it and is And it's wild. like he's, but there's an energy there that I don't think most humans have. No, he's an enigma. I, when I would go on the road with him and we would go do, you know, these little, t t little mini tour over city to city and then go back to L.A., yeah, he was unbelievable. He would always, he, you know, and I work out, but he was like, hey, we're going to go, you know, eat a steak, work out, go do shows, and then go eat a steak again at one in the morning. Wow. And then wake up and work out is the moment we would get up again. Wow. He was good. At, I mean, his discipline was pretty high. It was rare. But also, he would enjoy, you know, we always loved because he knows I'm a booze bag. So we'd always have some whiskey at the shows. And he's all, he lives kind of how I live, but it's... But he looks great. Yeah, and look at me. And I look like shit, Jim. You can just say it if you're going to say it. I'm, I, you know, compared to me, you look fine. <laughs> um, That's good. My, my album will be called I Look Fine. You look fine. I look fine. But, um, so I don't know. So, all right, so you did your special it was- At uh, the Vic Theater. At the Vic. That's mm -hmm. where I did my Beyond the Pale. Re oh, seriously? Yeah. Where did you do Comedy Monster? Where is this one at? Uh, Minneapolis. What a city. Yeah. Another great Midwest city. Right? Yeah. Mini I, have you done only Midwest specials? No. I've done a couple in Boston, but I did one in Columbus. Yeah. Uh, one in Austin. Um, so. Can I ask you something that yeah. might get in your it might be your craw? Yeah. How come you've been nominated six times and you never won? Because I'm not good. But um, isn't that annoying? That uh, did, At some point, don't you want to go, don't fucking nominate me if you're not going to fucking give me the no. thing? No. Because See, you know, I'm such a like, grump. In this business. Because I've always been like, you're not going to give it to him on one of these times? First of all, I it's was annoyed like, for you. You don't oh. have to be, but it pissed me off a few times where I was. It, it's not who you're up against. It's more, <sighs> get the fuck out. It's, it's Leonardo DiCaprio when you're like, give him the fucking thing, will you? With the th way, you're waiting. It's, it's weird. And by the way, it's like, I understand why people could be listen to this, listening to this and they'd be like, uh, yeah, he's lying. He's trying to be like humble or whatever. But it's like the nomination, first of all, it's a music award show. Yeah. And then they kind of throw some comedians. Mm -hmm. uh, so like if you're in the mix, that's all that matters. And also in the entertainment industry, the nomination really is the award. The, you know, that's the credit you want. Yeah, no, it's true. Like, I do a lot of acting. I wish I had an acting nomination for, like, an, uh, you know, for anything, just so that when I'm on a set and people are like, you're a comedian, and, or they looked at my Wikipedia page, they'd be like, oh, he also won an Emmy for being the lead, or he was nominated for an mm -hmm. Emmy. You know, it's this perception thing. Like, yeah. the awards are, are not just kind of like uh, an ego thing. It's a business thing that can help you. Sure. So like the the Grammy nominations are good because it also, you know, reminds you that there's a certain relevance. So like if, if the Grammy nomination is makes it more likely that the New York Times will review me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it all leads it I you know, I understand it. I just yeah. 
I think when you put someone. I can someone... see why you'd think it would be annoying, but it's it's not. It's like, what am I going to beat Chappelle? Yeah. And then like yeah, Al, you will. Al Yankovic <laughs> does one comedy <laughs> album in 30 years. It's like, am I going to beat Weird Al? You know what I mean? I don't have an expectation of. This is how I feel when I go I mean? to, when I perform in Vegas, when I'm like. God, my tickets aren't selling that well. I'm like, well, can I beat the Beatles on fucking roller skates this <laughs> right, week? Yeah. It's a nightmare. I don't know how. I'm like, yeah, why just... am I performing here? It's so hard. They're like, no, we were going to come see your show, but we had dinner where they light the knives on fire and they cut the steaks in the sky. And, yeah. But so your well, show- Vegas just... is also weird. I love performing in Vegas, but- Me too. I'm going to be there soon, but I, it's yeah. so hard for me to sell. It's, it's, it's hard, and it's also one of those things where- Unlike other shows, you don't realize that, like, a lot of people, it is a day of purchase. So you'll be, like, looking at your numbers, and you'll be like, oh, my God. And they're like, fine. And then you do the show, and people come. But, like, yeah, it looks bad, but a lot of people don't decide what they're going to do in Vegas till they get to Vegas. No, and that's true, because I, we are. I've been that guy, and you get to Vegas, and you go, what, do you wanna, what are we going to do? Are we going to do and then yeah. you figure it out as the night goes. I get it. It it's it just it's I never I'm at a weird point in my career where I've just kind of started to play small theaters since the Chicago theater which is big but I th- I want to know what it's like for you when you started to get there because I never looked at numbers before. I just wanted to go to each city and perform and work yeah. my ass off. Yeah. And Burr actually gave advice to me one time. He saw me and he's always been kind of a great uh coach or I don't know like a good He's you been re- redheads look out for each other. We do. We have. We don't have a choice. Uh, that's why we don't look after you, though. But we. But he just always was like, "Oh man, you're killing to the void." I bet. And I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "I bet you're crushing in these cities. You're working really hard, and <clears throat> there's not that many people coming out." And I said, "Yeah, it's, it's a little tough, but you know." And then I never checked. And then now, once you get a little bit of, you know, acumen, and then you get a little bit of growth, and then you're like, oh, "I got want. I want to know what it is." Is there a moment when you just stop looking? Or do you always look? Well, it's... Because the agent, they send you that fucking email. Well, by the way, some some people don't look. Some oh, people see, don't look. I, but like, do you? for me, I look. Oh, yeah. I'm a nerd for that kind of stuff. But I, you know, you have to understand, it's like, I, when I started doing theaters in the early 1800s, <laughs> no, when I started doing theaters... The expectation was, okay, well, I'll be able to do this for three or four years, so let's just go out and do it. Mm -hmm. And there were, you know, because most people had their run in the theaters and then it was over. So now it's like pretty much everyone who can get to theaters will stay in theaters. But so, like, it's weird. So, like, I was much more panicked about making sure that I was selling tickets, you know, about getting people there. And so then um, the whole thing of, you know, the tickets thing, it's it's also fun just because it's weird. You have complete control over it. You do not. Yeah, it's you. Do you know what I mean? It's It's like it's like you're doing in Chicago. You you know, you have a podcast. You're going to bring up that you're at the Chicago theater at every podcast you do. Yeah. Because that's your hometown. And you're not going to fuck that up. You're going to sell that out. It's yeah. not about money. It's about pride. Right. You know what I mean? It's all about, it's the only thing it's <laughs> right? about. Yeah, it's, no, it's like, it's about I pride. have to have all the humans inside the building for the thing. But by the way, I would also, I do think you have to plan, because the, the the downstairs of the Chicago theater. I need to throw a party there. You got to. You all right, gotta. well, how about this? I'll do it if you come. You got to have to come all the way to Chicago for yeah, me. Yeah, that's it. totally realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you what, do you love living in New York? Would you ever move back to the Midwest or no chance? I cuz I have a crush on New York, but I'm not in love with it. I have a huge yeah. sexy crush. To me it's like that that woman that I'm like I lust over New York, but I just know I couldn't marry New York. That's tough for me. I uh, you know, I've been there for 30 years and um by the way, it's even during the pandemic we rented a house in the suburbs and I had a little garden and stuff like that, so I'm like you got to be used to having no space and yeah, paying way too much for nothing. So, but I do like the energy of New York. I yeah, like I it's it helps propel me and I like the fact that I can you know, eat dinner with my family, then go do a spot, then come back and try and beg my teenagers to go to bed. So, I like that. <laughs> you you know get, what I mean? Is it is it uh 
Is it wild raising kids in that city? Is it as hard as people joke about? It is. Because people are like, you got to move to the burbs to raise kids. But they've grown up in the city their whole life. Yeah, they've grown. It's not like a danger thing like no. it used to be. Um, or if it was a danger thing. It's just, it's just expensive. Yeah, it's all the money. It's insanely expensive. But it's, I mean, I also grew up, you know, uh, you know, uh, the town I lived in did not have the diversity that I, you know, I want my kids to be exposed mm. to diversity. I, I don't want them to be freaked out by two men holding hands, you know, particularly if it's one of them's me and the other one's you. Well, but you and I should you know hold I mean? hands. No, but daddy's <laughs> making a change. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Well, because also, like, you know, my, I'm not going to... Me- There's a family friend of ours that... The Midwest can sometimes trap you, too, in certain yeah. ways. And, and obviously, it's changed so much. A hundred percent. But but the jokes are still there, where they're yeah. like... It, it is a little shocking when you don't live in a city where in L.A. or New York or Chicago, you're kind of inundated with everyone. You yes. don't have a choice. You know, you have to see everybody. Yeah. And a family friend... There's a grocery store called Jewel. You know, oh, Ju- yeah, yeah, I know. You know Jewel. Jewel Osco. Yeah. yeah. Jewel. I used to go... By the way, the Jewel Tea Fair. You don't know about that, do you? I don't know what that is. No. That was that... They used to have a fair... This was when I, like, I lived in the, in Barrington until I was eight years old, and they, and I lived in Jewel Park, and where they had a Jewel factory, I don't know, and they had the <laughs> Jewel Tea Fair, and we would sneak in, and they would build a fair for employees. Anyway, go on. You did. <laughs> I was waiting. I was letting you finish the Jewel yeah. Tea Fair. I, the Jewel, uh, uh, there was a Jewel that a family friend had said, you know, that's the lesbian jewel. What do you mean the lesbian jewel? And I was like, what does that mean, the lesbian yeah. jewel? And she was like, there was a couple of lesbians there when I was there last week. Oh, wow. And I was like, is this the first time you've ever seen two women there together? And she like, was like, does it matter? She was like, but I, you could tell that it was, they were lesbians. I could see it. And I was like, right on. Does that make it the lesbian jewel? Because there was one. She's like, well, I mean, I just, that's the frame. So sometimes you remember, you're like. And these like, are probably good people. Good people. That just, you know. But that's the lesbian jewel. And you know what's so funny? I say it now when I go buy it, just because yeah. I don't have you don't have a choice now. It's been transferred. I'm like, that's a lesbian jewel. And uh, when you do your comments on Yelp, you say the lesbian, lesbian jewel, jewel has lesbian the jewel. best bakery yeah. in town. I yeah. want my sister's a lesbian and she lives in Chicago. I wonder if she, she goes, goes to, to that, that. jewel. <laughs> <laughs> no, just that had that does happen. So I get I get wanting to like look, you can't escape diversity when you live in a city which yeah. is it is a good point that and you it's make not just it's not just racial and no, kind of gender everything. it's economic diversity People, yeah. it's yes every kind of person you've yeah. ever imagined is going to live in, and you're going to almost be forced to interact with them which yes. is what that's really what it is yeah your kids don't have a choice do you, which one do you love the least of my kids mm-hmm. oh gosh now the weird thing is it's like i I there's not one that I would give up. I know that sounds like a weird thing to say, but it, we, I remember when my wife was pregnant with a fifth. I was like, I was at that point, I was, you know, the I was like on board, but like there was part of me. It's like, what are we doing here? We could you just leave I mean? it at the hospital, you know. And um, and he looks exactly like me. And Is I'm he the just, only one that looks exactly the closest no, to you? No, but he's. We call him my mini me. Mm-hmm. And so, like, there is, and by the way, it's like it's gonna happen for you. You're gonna have a kid, and if it, if he or she looks like you, you there's, there's, I mean, it, that's in biology. They do that so yeah. that you're like, all right, I won't eat it, <laughs> right? <laughs> but maybe if you get hungry enough, maybe if I get hungry. But if you got hungry enough, you would eat the one I assume that looks the least like you. Yeah, there's a couple black ones, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Those, Those you eat first. That was uh, an old joke that I had. There's but, a couple of black ones. I love them all. No, but. it's like I used to have this joke where I was like, "Our uh, this is when my daughter, who's now 17, when she was first born, I was like, my daughter, people say she looks like me, and I think she looks like my wife, except for, uh, she looks exactly like my wife, except for she's black. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, they're identical. Right? Are you kids redheadies? You got some red My, my mini me's a little redhead. Oh, see. He's a strawberry blonde. Right. Strawberry you, blonde. You guys hold on to that. But he gets uh yeah, he's pretty he's pretty like my wife was a, I guess when she was 
a kid. She was a little bit of a strawberry blonde. I oh, didn't know her when she was a kid. Of course not. I hope I not. wouldn't have talked to her. She's a girl. Yeah, gross. Right? Nasty. Don't take this the wrong way. Yes. That's the name of the show. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, man, I've talked endlessly on this show about creating your own website, designing your own platform on the internet, and I use Squarespace. I love it. That's what we use for our sites. Um, I think they're so efficient, so effective, and so beautiful. Turn that cool idea you have uh, into a brand new website. You can showcase your work on there, announce an upcoming event. You know, it's a boy, it's a girl, or it's going to decide. Who knows? All right. We'll leave it open for the world. Blog or publish all your content, sell products online, services of any kind, whatever you got going. You massage therapist? Huh? Are you a motivational speaker? Are you a trainer? Are you a DJ? You can be all these things and uh, use Squarespace to get yourself powerful e-commerce functionality, let you sell almost anything online you can ever think of. Beautiful templates created by world-class designers, and everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box. You don't have to do anything at all. If I can do it, you can do it. 24-7 award-winning customer support, nothing to patch or upgrade ever, free and secure hosting, and it's a built-in search engine optimization. I've said this multiple times on this show. Big, big fan of Squarespace. They done me right. Let them do you right as well. Uh, go over to squarespace.com slash whiskey, as it always was, for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Once again, squarespace.com slash whiskey for the free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code, you know it, whiskey, and save yourself 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hey, everybody likes food. You need food, don't ya? So how do you get food if you're busy? You got back-to-back meetings, you got errands and chores. Who's going to help you clear off that list? DoorDash, baby. You can get dinner, household essentials, and everything on your grocery list delivered to your house very safely. You know, uh, DoorDash is incredible. If you don't know what it is, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Uh, I love DoorDash. I use it all the time. That's how I get my food delivered to my house. Okay, get what you want to eat right now. Right to your door with DoorDash, along with the restaurants you love. You can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. Come on. That's pretty incredible. Craving late night ice cream? You know I do, piggy boy, late night when I snacky snacky. Uh, You got that uh, one key ingredient. You you left cumin. You need cumin. They got it. Maybe you just need a stock up for the week. With DoorDash, get everything with one app. They got over 300,000 partners. You can support your neighborhood go-tos or your favorite national treasures. You got Popeyes, mmm, love that, G. Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory, which has a menu bigger than the Bible itself. Ordering is easy, and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees. 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code WHISKEY. You know that code. 25% off up to $10 value, zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store. Enter the code WHISKEY. Don't forget, code WHISKEY. 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change terms of life. Ginger. I like gingers. You, pl- I, you played football. Yes. Your demeanor is yeah. so... Uh, sweet and calm. Oh, well, thank you. Were you a psycho when you were young and played football? Mm, no, I don't think so. You're I wrestled s- too. I was a wrestler. Really? You don't have the psycho? All my friends that, that were wrestlers were our nutbags. I mean, you're about to go do Bobby's podcast tomorrow. Yeah. You know, Bobby and his little brother were like really, his little brother was like a really good wrestler oh, in San really? Diego. Re- but, you know, he's, it's, you know, yeah. upstairs is. You, got, well, you, know. you know, supposedly people that wrestled are, uh, you know, because you have to get your, you have to diet when you're like 12. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> that you, you end up having a weight problem. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So well, you do, like, uh, you're on a re- weird regimen where you have to fit into this, you yeah. have to do uh, the sweat, run in those, um, oh, yeah, what, uh, what are those I, called? You know, they're like, they're like sweat suits, know. but yeah, you should. They, they look like... Um, That's so funny, because, like, I wonder if Bobby jokes around... Like, I remember seeing footage of Bobby in kind of one of those onesies or whatever they're called. Mm, he could... I, I mean, know. apparently he was good when he was young. And I'm his sure brother was. was very good. So really? when you were young, did you have the, the anger and the temper, the fire? Did you have any of that? Or have you always been a calm guy? Oh, no. I, you know, I definitely... Um, I mean, I'm kind of probably like you. I have definitely a temper. But, you know, it's like I'm... Uh, you know, I like most men. I want. <laughs> I don't want to alienate everyone. Yeah. But I would, and you know, like by the way, I'm a dad. I'm kind of a son of a bitch, kind of a dad, like my dad was. Yeah. But um, 
I would say that, yeah, I don't know. But I was, I did football and wrestling. I did wrestling because I didn't make the basketball team. But um, I did, uh, I think I, I did sports out of habit. And by the way, my kid, one of, I have three boys, only my, one of my sons likes sports. The other two are like, not interested at all. Do you like sports anymore or no? I like watching it. That's what I mean. Like, are you, yeah. you still have a team you root for and all that shit or no? Yeah, um, I'm more root for the NFL than anything, you know, like right. for different teams. Sure. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. um, you know, but yeah, like I, uh. You know, the my family did a Super Bowl shuffle. Like you were probably born in eighty five, right? I was born in eighty three. Really? <laughs> oh my god. The Bears. <laughs> and so um I was born into a Super Bowl, basically. You were born into a the 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 most famous Bears. The greatest team. Bears team that I'll ever see as I live on Earth. That's right. for that's for sure. But you don't even know about Walter Payton. You can't appreciate him. I when I was a kid, I mean I would see stuff after it was all over, but I mean you know, it's like saying I, I won't like the Beatles because I didn't know that. But I, you could appreciate it in the after effect, but I didn't live in the era. But I right. lived in the era of the greatest basketball player that yes. ever picked up a ball. That yeah. was my entire childhood. Yeah. That's why football to me, I loved it. Basketball was the only thing that mattered. It's so interesting. Because I grew up with that well, guy. By the way, it's like I have all these nephews that are growing up in Chicagoland. Huge hockey fans. Like, they, I have nephews in Indiana. Like, we didn't play hockey. Yeah. And now they're like, yeah, I got to take my son to hockey. And I'm like, hockey? <laughs> there weren't even rinks. <laughs> like, I mean, Chicago had the Blackhawks, but it wasn't like, it wasn't everyone. That was no. just like some people were into hockey. Not like New England, you know, or, right. or Minnesota or Wisconsin were into hockey. Chicago was kind of like, yeah, we got a hockey team, you know? Yeah, but, but and Michigan people are hockey fanatic. Oh, you go up there, you talk, ho- there, that's like, that's life. Yeah, hockey is live. No, I I didn't get involved in any of that stuff because uh, basketball was all consuming. Because that's all Chicago was just. My dad doesn't really love uh, the NBA. He doesn't. No, loves baseball. Love. We've co- grew up Cubs fans. Cubs fans. Yeah, but okay. but the Bulls. We the only thing we could do if we were we couldn't watch TV if we ate dinner. But if the Bulls were on, we could. That was like the exception of the rule because he loved watching Jordan. Wait a minute, didn't you say you grew up with a single mother? I did. No, no, my this is my stepdad. I call okay, him my dad, okay. but he, my mother uh, remarried and uh, and he was kind of a hard ass. But you could watch TV. He just would, no TV during dinner. But if the yeah. Bulls were on, we could watch Jordan because it was Jordan. It was like yeah. a spectacle to be able to watch him. I remember how like we would all sit, we sat one time. I remember looking at my mom eating, holding a plate, which was very unusual. That we would always have to sit at the dinner table. But like holding a plate on the couch, I was like, "This is insane." Yeah, that this is, is only unusual. because this mad this magician is on TV yeah. playing basketball. That to me was like the. That's why I think I fell in love with almost only basketball as a kid, and then grew into the other. And will bullshit. you go to Lakers games or Clipper games? Yeah, I'll go. I mean, yeah. I, it's not like you live in New York. You like adopt. Wait a minute, these are teams. you a UFC comedian? Are you no. like into the UFC stuff? No, you know Joe took me to those things, and I tried. Yeah. <clears throat> um. I I, do, I like boxing when I was a Did kid. Did you get aroused when these two men were hitting? I would, well, I couldn't come because they sometimes they knock themselves out so fast right. I could You're never like, finish oh, in time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I it's cool to it's cool to appreciate the sport the like mixed martial arts is impressive. You were just confused why a man was hitting another man and not a woman. A woman. I said, yeah. "Where is the lady?" Yeah. And yeah. they hold the cards. And I say, "Get her in there and yeah, smack Get that right out of her hand." Yeah, right. She's <laughs> she's walking with too much confidence in your view. Yeah, look, her boobs are out. I never really loved UFC. I, is this a thing for you? You, no, you no, it's it's all new to me. You it's cool. I, mean? I get it. I just haven't invested no time in it whatsoever. I'm in my new hour. I'm trying to talk about that world just because it's fascinating. Sure, it is so. It's it's you know all my nephews love it. You know what I mean. So I'm like, all right. It's like uh, it's kind of like how it's I feel. like the internet. It's just like the web. It's uh, it's the uh, interweb. You, you know it, and you know it's it, like, don't you? You know, cable cable TV's huge now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the oldest guy in the world. Yeah. Now they have televisions, and you could take it with you. You know, on your on your you mobile. Could, you could take it you, you when they put, say mobile. In your mobile, you put it on your fucking you mobile. You can mobile? walk around. You know what I mean, why not? Would you Would you ever do an NFT? How far away is that from you? Um, 
Or how about this? Are you into crypto? I own some crypto. Oh, don't do this. I'm too old thing. You're fucking, you're hot as a pistol. What do you have? Tell me you've got Bitcoin. Yeah, I have some Bitcoin. You got the bit. All right. How much do you have? I have Ethereum. I actually only did Ethereum. Only did Ethereum. And you know what? I don't know why. I just shied away from Bitcoin when I first was But you've been in a while. I haven't been in that long because my friend who opens for me, Ted Alexandro, is really, he got really into the crypto during the lockdown portion so uh, he's like and so he, when we did tour, he sucker like, you into doing it yeah 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 it's always your like one of your good friends he's like he there's finally you know the mayor of new york got his two per first two paychecks in crypto is that real that's true holy shit would you would you ever take a gig pay in crypto if you so you played some huge theater and they're like jim we We'll give you the cash know. or crypto. What about, well, I want to hear your thing about NFTs. What about NFTs? I ha- I'm starting to really sniff around them because I think they're super interesting because I've gotten in this debate with people that the typical answer is always like, it's fucking bullshit. You know, it's like easy yeah. to go like, good. But I'm starting to understand the value in when you NFT something, every time it gets bought, you get paid back for yeah. it. Also, yeah. you can make the exclusivity is what matters. So it's much like saying for a comic, you, it's like crafting your perfect Ted joke. Ted Alexandra was going to sell a special on crypto, via crypto, and he didn't do it. That's a great idea. Just a couple of years ago, and he didn't do it. He got scared. No, I think it was it was a complication with someone building the the capability, and um, I think that's a great idea. On, oh on, shit, maybe I wasn't supposed to say that. Uh, but um, it's well, there. it's like there's stuff out there. You know, there's story of the guy that. Bought the pizza with the crypto. Yeah, I heard that he bought he bought a pizza with like one bit one or two Bitcoin, and I think they did it later. And what he had paid for the Bitcoin versus what it's worth now, and it was like a couple hundred thousand dollar pizza or something like that. Yeah. It was really sad. So who who is in the NFT world? See, I have a friend who's an artist who's a great artist, and he's the one that told me I should do it. And he's like, I can help you teach you how to like mint it and all that stuff. And he's been making a bunch of money in it and i just and so is uh so is he so what would you do you'd do a stand-up bit i don't know maybe yeah stand-up bit or like um you know bobby and i show bad friends has a lot of like fan art yeah like that kind of stuff and people make it and there's a lot of digital fan art that they make and i was like what if we nft'd one of those arts and then we split it with the artist where the artist gets some of that trickle down and we get some of the trickle then it's like fair for everybody and then they take you to court yeah, well, we get we do we get them involved in the beginning, and then they take you to court. Yeah, but you're my attorney, and then they look. Let me explain to you: the legal ramifications are very simple. <laughs> if you do not, unless you get a commitment, when the art was made, uh-huh. now, there's just like that's what the whole thing is yeah. like. Who shot it? Where was the shot? You know. Well, that's you know. that's like um, Pete Davidson drew a stick figure, and supposedly that. Is worth twenty thousand dollars. <sighs> yeah. God bless. By the way, if I had a podcast like you, mm-hmm. this is our podcast now. A weekly, uh, it's called the Recessives, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but you could talk about your crypto. I mean, your, uh, NFT, oh, your NFT every week and get people to really get into in, into it. Well, I, I think yeah. it has to catch a little fire. Vi- it has to be some sort so like of viral those ape fire. NFTs are taking off, right? Right, because that's so. There has to be some sort of virality to it to like really get people. Interested. Otherwise, I think you're just making NFTs. That I think there's people that make NFTs. They make no money. You have to have some kind of viral world built around you or it already, and then it goes. Mm. Yeah, but. I don't know enough about it. I'm very interested because I do know that I don't want to be the guy in the end that goes. Yeah, it was bullshit. And then everybody else was like, shit, why did you not? Why couldn't, why wouldn't you just play? You know? Because also, it's a lot of money. I'm scared. I don't want to, I don't want to put, I don't want to invest a ton in crypto either because I don't want to lose a lot. Like, what's the, mo- what's the most you've ever invested in something like that? Um, Do you put a lot of money in? I put everything in. <laughs> it's all gone. My wife and children. No, I, um, I don't know. I mean, some of it is, I'm only putting money in there that I could lose. Let me be very clear about that. Yeah. But uh, it is also one of those where I talk to my friend and he's like, look, it's going to be 
something, is it going to be? It's going up more than the stock market. Sure, so, right, right. But I don't know. I mean, it's like weird. People people buy art as an investment. Like that seems like a lot of work. Yeah, I don't. I, well, I'm too dumb to understand the the depth of why something is worth more on a physical scale of the artist, and you have to understand their history and. And then, and then also it's about like the lineage of who's owned the art. That's important. Oh, really? Which doesn't exist in the NFT world. I'm saying in the world of art, it, who owned it prior is part of wow. the reputable what sale. What about real estate? Do you own real estate? I own this building. You do? I do not. I rent this building. <laughs> How, like, are you, you're a pretty good liar, I'm right? Great liar. Yeah. Are you known as a liar? Oh, yeah. You're known as a big liar. Oh, yeah. Or fib, we call it fibber. Fibber? But f- well, Fibba, don't do a hard Fibba. R. Just say Fibber. Fibba. He's a Fibba. You know that Fibba. Fibba. No, I, 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 um, I love facetiousness. It's part yes. of it's part of my chemical makeup. As, as a kid, I loved fucking with people. What is your favorite thing to eat? Um, butthole. Men's butthole. <laughs> what's my favorite? Honestly, on, let's, what's my indulgence? Don't hold yourself back. <laughs> like you know, don't censor yourself here. My fate. My um. No, are you Italian? My Italiano, my dirty little. I'm an and Irish, and you know, but my dirty little like um, food secret would be like. Uh, I mean, I, I could eat. I can eat pizzas. Yeah, pizzas, uh, plural, multiple. Like, yeah, it's almost like embarrassing. Tim was like, "I'm eating a meatloaf," and we thought it might be a whole meatloaf. Yeah, it's a loaf. When I, it's like, like a loaf of bread, is what. And I, I say of. that with true affection. And like mindedness, like mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? I could devour a meatloaf, but like you could eat a whole piece. By the way, are a deep dish or a thin crust? We call uh, tavern or pub pizzas is what we say. Really? Square cuts. That's the thin, super thin crust. Oh yeah, that they serve in traditional bars or pubs, tra- taverns in Chicago. That's most Chicagoland people's favorite. Deep dish is a thing we have for tourists. We have it once in a while. Yeah, no, no. My brothers make fun of me because I love deep dish. No, so much. I, do, I like it. Yeah, but we don't eat it the way people joke about. It. People are like, "Oh, deep dish," and you're like, "Yeah, we have it once in a while." It is weird. This the square cut pizza favorite. I grew up like that. You get so yeah. many good pieces on the all. So everybody gets a nice little chunk of square. But there's nothing better than deep dish. It's by far my favorite. By you're, the way, I don't even. I'm not saying I like it more than. Other pizza, uh, other types of pizza. I like it more than life. <laughs> I is it what's your favorite uh, food? We were in, so we did a family reunion in Chicago for Christmas, oh. and on December twenty fifth, we had deep dish pizza for dinner, and my wife was not happy. Why? That's what a great. That's so much better than traditional Christmas hams. Right? Oh my god, it was so good. Do you like Thanksgiving food, or are you not a Thanksgiving guy? It's all right. Nah, I mean, it's. The worst. It's like, come on. We don't do it at my house. You don't? No. What do you do? We prime rib. Ooh, prime rib. Is my mom good. cooks a prime rib. Oh, I'm coming over. Yeah, come on. Seriously. What's your mom's name? Maureen. Maureen. So she's Irish. Yes. Look at this. Where this is this where this has come from. So your dad was Italian. Yeah, big Sicilian guy. Yeah, Jim, that's how the last name is usually <laughs> <laughs> like the dumbest guy on No, but I'm letting you have Wait it. Wait a minute, your mommy <laughs> dad. Um I look like I'm every kid from Chicago. Is either is it a half a, a half Italian, half Irish, or or some Polish. It's either half yeah, there's Polish. There's a lot of Poles. More than in Warsaw. Yeah. Yeah, we like, run the gambit. You think like you? I've always heard that uh, there's more Polish in Chicago than, but like, there's not that many Polish people. No, right now my whole Twitter feed's like, <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? No, but like, I love uh, pierogies. Jim, why does it always have to be about food? Because I'm afraid. To what is your feelings. What is your What is your food? What's the one that you can't live with? I'm um, death row, Jim. You're on death row. And what's, oh my god, what are you so eating? Many things. I mean, you know, look, there is. By the way, I have a lot of fond memories of going into Chicago and going to Greek Town. Yeah, Greek Town. Ugh, amazing. You like yourself some Greek food, huh? Ugh, amazing. Um, but uh, the best burger is in Northwest Indiana. Uh, Shoops, you probably never heard of it. Shoops. Have you heard of Shoops? S C H O U P. Yeah. Yeah, I know Shoops. And uh, did you like it or no? No. No. Well, you didn't have it. <laughs> Um, what about um, the uh, 
But yeah, deep dish is pretty amazing. You know what we had at Christmas? We had paquit, polkits, pukits. Huh? I'm going to let you figure it out. Pasquats, paquats. Pequats? Pequats. Ah. Poquits is great. <laughs> you know, I, I, We went into poquits. Uh, yeah, poquits. Yeah, pequots. pequots. You had pequots. Yeah, pequots. Yeah. Did you like? I liked it. Yeah, very good. But, you know, Luz. Luz is the best. Luz is king. It is so good. Right? Even though people will fight you, Chicagoland people will fight you about whose is better and the Luz is a sellout and they're on every corner now and- yeah, what's wrong with that? Still love Lou. Yeah, McDonald's is too. Oh. oh, how dare they succeed? Right. It's the same with Portillo's. Have you ever had Portillo's? Oh, love that. I can follow. So, so that is my ultimate meal, is the Italian beef, Italian sandwich combo. Combo. Piece of Italian sausage and then Italian beef on top. Oh, my God. Sweet and hot peppers on top. Juicy. Run it up with cheese. Put By it down. By the way, um, have you ever had uh, the double chopped at uh, in Austin at... God, what's it called? I don't know. It's like, but it's, I think it's so fat. I can't remember what it's called. Outback Steakhouse? But no, it's not Outback. <laughs> Is a diarrhea factory? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I do think it's interesting, the Italian beef that is so good. So good. Which is similar to the French dip, which is also similar to the Philly cheesesteak. Kind of. But it's wetter. Right? Ours is marinated more, is the best way that we like to say it. Have you ever gotten it delivered where you cook it at home? Uh, we do this two or three times a year at my house really? here in Los Angeles. Yeah. My mother ships us some every year. It's the best. One of my best friends. We always get it I as had a my gift. my kids made it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they... I get Lou sent to me a fair amount. I get Lou's too. You know, Bobby is a... Uh... Is addicted to deep dish pizza. You should talk to him about it tomorrow. We oh have one God, in our really? freezer right now here at the I'm studio. Steal- well, I'd steal it, but I don't have the oven. Yeah, on my Instagram, did you see that? You don't follow me, probably. Let me see. No, on my Let's Instagram, gonna, I have a whole right thing now. about deep dish pizza and talking about how, the whole experience, how you have to, you go in there, you oh, order, yeah. and then you wait like a day and a half. And they're like, do you want something? And you're like, when's it coming? When's it coming? It they're takes like, forever. But and also, then, isn't and then the- they come out with something. They hold it like it's like something that they hold glass when they're shaping it, <laughs> and they're like, "Here you go." And they take this scoop out and they give you a piece that weighs ten pounds. Doesn't it make you feel so good when you see it come out? And that yeah, those are like those are like pliers. They're like grip yeah. pliers. Yeah, and they lay yeah. it down because they don't want to touch it. They're like, "Here you go, everyone." Do you put meat on it? Are you a meat guy? I like the layer of sausage sausage layer yeah people don't know it's a blanket of sausage that they put on there it's i don't like bits and pieces of i like every bite (laughs) has is this making you feel something right yeah i was just gonna say (laughs) to go to the bathroom now i have to change my diaper i need to ask you something about um when you said your new hour because it's wild. You didn't to me. watch it, did you? you Why asked. would I watch that shit? That bull- no, no. You know what's well, crazy? And I did fucking watch your you hour. You did watch yeah, it? Yeah, I actually did watch your hour. Because there is something. Thank you. Because with comedians, there's. You can't ex- assume that comedians. Because we kind of. Uh, I assume most comedians are like. There's like new specials every week. So we kind of set aside time. Like, all right, I'm going to watch some at a certain point. I so. do it when I'm on the road. Yeah. <clears throat> when I'm in my hotel, uh, is my favorite time. To watch someone's special. In fact, like the first time Segura had a, when he had his first special on there, I rem- I was in Chicago on the road yeah. and I was doing Schomburg and I texted him and I was like, hey man, I just so proud of you. I just want to tell you amazing. And he's like, fuck you. You didn't watch it. Like he, he thought I was, I was like, no, yeah. I, I, I swear to God. <laughs> I go, I'm out, I'm out of town. And that's almost like the validity. He was like, oh, maybe you, maybe you did. Cause yeah. I was sitting in my hotel room. Is it, you're bored. It's nothing. You know, I'm like, I want to fill it. But no, I did watch it. You know, look, I got some notes for you. I know it's already out, but uh, you know. we can't go backwards. All right, tell me what the last joke is. You uh, didn't finish it, did you? I, uh, how, do you? Have you ever finished a special? I have. Really? You, you know, know so speaking funny? of Chicago, there's a couple... This is There's a couple Mulaney references in it. And I'm friendly with Mar- Mulaney, but, like, I've been texting him and he hasn't responded. And so then I asked, like... I'm like, hey, uh, did Mulaney change his And you don't want to be like, I didn't get the new phone number. Like, Rogan changes this number, too. Every week, yeah. And so, like, you're like, I kind of wanted to give him a heads up that I'm mentioning him a couple times. But it's not defa- it's not defamatory. No, no So it doesn't, why would it matter then? I guess? Well, 
Well, I don't know your relationship. He may be very sensitive to you talking about No, he's about not him. sensitive at all. But like, it's just like a heads up just in case, you know. Have you ever talked about someone in a special and you uh, were afraid that it was going to offend them? Not really. You never mentioned something where, or did you mention like someone, but you didn't say their name, like a family member or something like that where? I will, I remember when I first started, when you were just a twinkle. A wee your, little lad. Um, I, uh. I remember I did Caroline's Comedy Hour and I, I did my first TV set and it was mostly about my dad. And I was like, uh-oh, he's going to find out. <laughs> my dad's going to find out. Yeah. And so then he saw it and he loved it. And I was like, I, I'm so confused. Yeah. Like I thought that people like that stuff. They like it. Because my dad was kind of a, a you know, a no bullshit kind of guy. And so, but he liked it. He appreciated it, and you know, you, it was what, done with affection. What did your old man do? What did he, he do? He was a banker. Oh, boy, real stiff. Well, uh, he was like, you know, first one in his family to go to college, so it was like he was aspiring to be, like my grandfather made dentures, and I remember thinking, oh, brutal. But he uh, was the first one to get out of the coal mine. Everyone before that was working in a coal mine. Oh, my God. Right? And then no you joke. do this jokey bullshit. Yeah, like my dad was the first one to go to college. You know, we kind of arrive in the middle class, and I'm like, hey, I'm thinking of telling diarrhea jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, well, what? <laughs> no, you wear a collared shirt <laughs> to work. I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. And they're like, all right. Do you remember the moment that you knew your parents were going to like, that you were making, that you made it and your, your parents acknowledged it where they were like, holy shit, this guy's taking off. Well, it's, yeah. I mean, I did Letterman. My dad was still around. You killed him, which is really weird. I did not. You did. You caused his death. Part of it. Um, no, but like, so I was in the newspaper and there was a picture of my dad with my headshot. It's a, it sounds like, <laughs> I, it looked like I was a missing child, <laughs> <laughs> but it was in, uh, the, you know, I think it was, what was, I think it was, you know, there was, what was it called? Was it called the Gary Post Tribune? But I think Gary was, I think they got rid of Gary. Not Gary, and they, Indiana? Yeah, no, it was Gary, Indiana. But like, oh, it was, they got rid of the name for the newspaper. Ah, uh, and this is when dad was like, my boy's uh, yeah my, pretty, pretty my, big shot comedian guy. My uh, boy did good. Did you get shit for moving to New York? Was that like a whole thing with like, oh, oh yeah. New no, York I, City? I was considered, you know, the, the kind of like Jimmy. He's, well, Jimmy's doing his, it was definitely the comedy thing. Jimmy's doing the comedy thing. When did it flip? I think um, when I got Letterman, I think that was, you know, oh, wait a minute, this is real. I mean, there were, I mean, by the way, you have to understand, I'm like one of four boys and and considered third funniest in my family. So <laughs> like there's, there's, there's two daughters too, and they're very funny too. But like, it was like comedy was like, they're like, he's not even the funniest one. You know, so it was like <laughs> so one of those rude. things. Yeah. Like, are they successful in their own right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, you know, it's like what is success is so individual. I mean, I would say that uh, they all made a good living. That's they, good. You know That's what I mean? It. Yeah, they're happy doing what they, and they yeah. make it. Yeah. But like, I think that, you know, two of them probably should have gone into comedy. You really think so? I think they could have done well. Better than you? Probably not. No, who's better than you? Nobody works harder than me. Other than the other people that were nominated and won the Grammys. Yeah. But that, that's all right. That's but that's okay. That's all right. I got you know. So like, oddly what, enough, the same people that protested Netflix for Dave Chappelle's special protested for your special. Why do you think that is? I don't know. They were mad at yours. They were mad. They were they were very mad. They're like, but you know what's weird? There were um, in my special. There was there's you know there's stuff that pisses people off. Real? Do you really? There's you always, don't you don't really poke anything in a no. You have to understand. There's people that are. There's always people that are upset. There's people that are like, I'm so disappointed about what you said about marching bands, and I'm like, I was joking. <laughs> it's insane. It's so and innocuous. I'm so disappointed in how you talked about your wife. You know what I mean? Like there. I yeah. That's a but that is a and thing. And when you when you talk about you know when you talked about your experience on Bob and Tom, it's like. I've also had people 
come, you know, like, the, like I don't even remember the comments. And they're like, you know what? I'll run into them and they'll be like, you know what? I just want to apologize. I Three years ago, I sent a tweet where I said something really nasty to you. And I'm like, I don't really remember. And they're like, you know what? I was in a bad mood. And I'm like, that's so weird. So, mm-hmm. like, it is strange. So, but I'm sure you get tweets where I do, are but like, I also, I don't. I don't really do Twitter anymore because I've been exhausted with the political. Once it went to this political sphere and yeah. I saw some of my friends' comics getting into political arguments, I was like, this is a total waste of my time. I thought yeah. this was for fun. This is for like putting out yeah. shit to the ether and making a joke about nonsense. Right. And then when it got political, I genuinely checked out. I was like, and no so thanks. so where did you, you went to Bumble. I went to Hinge. Hinge? Hinge. Is Hinge another? That's a dating app. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I shifted over to Raya. Do you do you know what Raya is? No, what's Raya? Raya is for hot, famous Hollywood people. Raya. Yeah, Raya. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Riot or Raya? It is a Raya. It's Raya. R R A Y A. So wait, how do you determine who can be on there? They, they, let, they, they tell you if you get in or not. You submit. Are you on it? Of course not. I'm married. I don't have to be on oh, it. Oh, you're married. Yeah. I'm married too. But, but right. no, but you submit, there's a, there is a, you have to be vouched for, right? You have to be like, someone has to uh, um, recommend you, you know what I mean? And then they judge you based on your Instagram following, your your looks. You your... have to pay to be on it? No. Probably. No. No. No, no, no. But it's in an exclusive group that is a invite only uh, and a suggested Spade, this is like Spade's the king of this this kind of thing. He's on Raya. Of course, he's on Raya. Yeah, he this is he loves stuff like that. He's a Holly. He's a little Hollywood guy. Yeah, no, that's so interesting. Yeah, but it's very like exclusive and so it's kind of just like Twitter, or is it? I don't see. Like I never. It's a, date, used, it's a sheer dating app. I never did a dating app. Yeah, so this is like, this. I didn't do them either. I never got to okay. one. But this is like the if. If you're if you were single, you'd be on Raya, just because you work in the entertainment industry. Oh, that's so interesting. And then it's this exclusive collection of men wouldn't, who are dating women way out of their league because they're rich and or famous. But wouldn't all that be uh, leaked to like the press? Like people are like, uh oh, here this guy. Oh, is that when like I remember a couple years ago, uh, a couple years ago, a couple months ago, where like. Some someone like uh, I don't want to say uh, the name because I might get it wrong, but like where older celebrities were sending creepy direct messages is that? I mean, that's probably where some of that stuff comes from for sure. Well, like okay. you know, where like um that or like uh yeah Instagram DMs or Snap or all that stuff. Like, but this kind of app I think is very private. Oh, actually, you know what? No, because a friend of mine's on it, and he says if you screenshot it, they kick you off. Like they know you screenshot, you know when you screenshot oh, on your iPhone, wow. and they can tell, and they remove you. You get, you get, uh, it's like a violation. You get removed from the app if you screenshot and send oh, stuff that's out. That's brilliant. Yeah, because they want to make it sexy and exclusive, and it's like this known thing where you're probably talking to famous people because most of the people on there are of some fame or something like that, like athletes and oh, rock stars. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Oh, I've got a couple of friends that are on it, and sometimes I, they, I let them. They give me their phone so I can thumb through it, just so I can see all the who the famous people that are on it. Who are the hotties on there? Not that you can, <sighs> you know, I can't disclose. Yeah, uh, but I will. Um, are they? Uh... It's a lot of older, not, not older as in age, but in um, celebrities that from from before. People that like blew up in the late oh, right, 90s or early right, right, Yeah. Right. And now they're looking for love again because either they're divorced or they're. And so they're, it's, it's. We're going to get you on it. <laughs> I don't need to be on it. I know, but we're going to just because we're going to. No, but <laughs> it's like, it's so fascinating because I guess that makes sense, right? Yeah. Why wouldn't there be that? For... An exclusive app for the, it's like anything for the wealthy. Once you get a window into the world of like the rich or and or famous, you're like, oh, right. That's, that, that is how they. That's of course how they operate different. And than... so it's, but it's probably just LA, or is it everywhere? Oh, come on! New York is ripe with all that culture, with models, and, and... then London and all that. Of course, yeah, exactly. I mean, you see, like New York has the same. There's okay. This cut from the same cloth, but not the same people. Like people that live in New York that are sexy and hot, are the different sex. They're not the sexy and hot people here because here they're more. Um, 
begging to be famous. There they just want to be hot and cool in New York. When I see hot, cool people in New York, they're like, we already made it, we're in New York. And out here it's like hot, cool people that are like, I want to be an Instagram model and be on a reality show. But New York is a reality show. Wow. You can't beat New York. You can't beat being hot in New York. Look at you, you stroll around the streets. Chicago, there's probably that in Chicago, right? No. What about uh, John uh, (laughs) Cusack? (laughs) <laughs> there's people in chicago right yeah him and bill murray there's a couple of guys strolling around the streets of chicago i'm sure they're babe vince vaughn yeah babes vince vaughn. mega babes john cusack got shit because he was going to uh i think it was a playoff game for the white oh, Sox. Yeah, somebody gave him that. shit but you know he was he 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 oh, checked no, the he, guy he, he was like him. i know more about the white Sox than you do and he was like do you know so and so so and so so and the guy interviewing him had no idea who any of these players were he's yeah, like that's, you don't know shit it's that's an example of like we want to do these purity tests on things. Yeah, why? I don't know. I when the Cubs, uh, when they hadn't gone, they hadn't won the World Series. I was invited to a World Series game, and I'm like, I'm not going. Why? And like, well, because I grew up a Cubs fan. Yeah, but I haven't been one. You know, but you're still one of us. I know, but the thing is, is like I don't want to take that away from somebody else. Ah, oh, fuck, that's crazy. You're what is you? No, that's for you. No, you earned no, it. No, no, no. I mean, I you know, as a little kid, you know, uh, I was a Cubs fan. Like you don't even know Jose Cardinal, Rick Monday, and yes, all this I stuff. do. I know these and, guys. Um, but it's Johnny like, Bench, <laughs> he was a Cincinnati Red. I know he was. And so, but like. I didn't want to, you know, look, I like the good stuff, but I don't like something like that. I don't want to take that away. I get from, it. I took my dad I mean? to the world, to a world series game. It meant the world to us. Huge. It was, it was probably the coolest thing I've ever done. And he, and I printed out the tickets and, um, you was a hero. It, well, I, thank you. By and, the way, I beat it though. I brought what did my, you do? I brought my mother-in-law who is a devout Catholic. And she got, because of me, she got to meet, meet the, the Pope. Pope. I knew it, you son of a bitch. I could feel that you were going to do that. <laughs> meet the Pope. How do you How do you hook up with the Pope? Raya? Raya. The Pope is on Raya, imagine. <laughs> I don't even, I still think you're making this up. I There's... swear to God. Wait, how do, you got to tell me this quickly. Where, well, that's when I, I did this thing where I opened for the Pope. Did you crush at the Vatican? You played the Vatican? No, it was in Philly. <laughs> but... um. <laughs> So wait a minute. So who's opening for you at the Chicago Theater? Chris O'Connor. And we call we call him the turd. The turd, which is done as a compliment. Mm-hmm. He, I call him my little brisket. He's a, a phenomenal comic. He's in New York. He lives in New York. He's a Philly guy. Yeah. Uh, Philly by way of uh, New York. Uh, New York and New York again. Now he lives. Shane Gillis is his. One Buddy. of his best friends. Oh great! Yeah, yeah great, you know, great. Sh- yeah, you know Shane. Yeah, Shane special is good. Very funny. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah, but really uh, overshadowing you. I mean, I don't know why I would, why, years, why would you let years that years of difference. Years of difference, you yeah, know. Jeez. <laughs> Just like burying you. <laughs> Christopher O'Connor is opening for me in Chicago. He does most of the tour with me and I love it because he's uh I think he's so funny. And I think I learned a lesson from Joe. Yeah. That Joe was always like take somebody that, that does really really well before you. He's like there's guys that'll take people that stink. And he's like they do that for confidence boosters and ego. He's like, always take someone that's actually a very good comic. Yeah. He's like, don't ever give it to somebody. Then because- why did he have you? <laughs> okay. I knew. I set you up. You set me up there. And then yeah. I set you up. Uh, Sebastian. I mean, uh, you know, they're, they're Can I tell cool. you something? I used to crush in front of him, and it felt so good in a fucking arena because I was so nervous to do arenas. Yeah. And I told him, I was like, I really appreciate doing this with you. I don't, on a, on a solo level, I never want to do arenas. If I ever get to a place when I could physically do it, I don't ever want to do them because they were just, it was daunting. And then even when I was out there, I was like, does that guy hear me? Well, In row 4,080? I, I, I know what you're saying. But, it was so far away. The, and I was resistant to it, but, and I haven't, I, you know, I'm not doing it like Joe or anything like that, but the technology has advanced so much. Yeah. And there's certain arenas where you're like, you know what, this is pretty good. And it is, uh, it's a fun group situation. I mean, the Chicago Theater is 4,000 people. 
That's a lot of people. But the arenas we did were like ten and a half. They were. It was like eighty five hundred or ten thousand. But it's similar to the excitement of like when you do Madison Square Garden. People are like, "It's Madison Square Garden." You know, it's not going to be, uh, you know, the intimacy of a comedy club, but it's also the eruption of the audience is not the same. I think the happy balance from it's just a personal. Like I, I think like the Wilbur is like a perfect, beautiful size. Yeah. I could play a thousand shows there forever. I was like, that's. A, it's something about that number Wait a minute, for me. In Vegas, are you doing the win? The win, yeah. Yeah, I do the win too. That's a good theater. Is it? I've never, I've never oh, been it's out a there. Great theater. Do you golf? I don't. Oh fuck! I was gonna say we we should play, but he, I'm gonna go play out there at the course because they have a, he's got a course right yeah. there. That have was you ever part of the deal. With Nate, Nate, I have. I played with him in Nashville. He's pretty good. Yeah. So um, Nate, he was doing the night after, and he was there with some golf pros. I don't know who they are, but they were very nice guys. Yeah. No, he's a he is obs- he's obsessed. I'm in love. He's obsessed. Yeah. He's a teenager in love. Like Do you who's have kids? Obsessed. No, no kids. But I will take your kids. And now, is there? Are you guys interested in that, or or we're not thinking about? Yeah, that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And what does your wife do besides stripping? She does well. She, she stripping is it? We call it intimate massage. Right. Intimate uh, massage. It's intimate. It's, she's an intimate masseuse. Right. But she's not in the business. She's totally disconnected. Right. She wants nothing to do with it. She doesn't like it. She doesn't want to be a part of it. And which I think is kind of nice. She. So she doesn't want me bring this up. Oh no, no, it's okay. I talk about her on the show, but yeah. she has nothing to do with the world, which I kind of love that and she's where did got her you own meet thing her? here in L.A. In L.A. Actually, we met in Long Beach. Long Beach. Where all the love begins right. in Southern California. I heard the beach there is long. It's shorter than you'd think. And so you met her there. Brought her up here. You uh, you met her. She was dancing you, a lot of dollars. Mm-hmm. Intimate massage. Intimate massage. Um, you're like, I say, quit your job. You stick with me, and, kid. You'll be okay. And is she? she's from Long Beach? No, no, no. No, she's from Colorado. Colorado. Wow, one of my fa- the city the, the the state I'd probably want to move to if I could get out of here. Really, love Denver. Yeah, I love Denver. It's just too. that I don't, there's something about the. It's just it smells nicer there. The people are, the disposition is just like yeah, we're all figured. We're all trying to stay healthy as much as we can. Yeah, but they also party. Like it's yeah. I like that people like to drink and then also get some exercise in, but then eat a cheeseburger and then also go for a hike and then go get stoned and go skiing and. I like I, I like playing all the chords. It's you know this is so Denver, from my perspective, this is like so pre weed being legal. I was, sure, obviously it was first legal in Colorado in the states. Breckenridge, no less. Uh, Denver, I mean Denver was a big drinking city. Oh like, yeah, Chicago was a big drinking city. Milwaukee, um, and so it was so interesting to witness the shift of denver from this rowdy drunk audience to like everyone took too many apples <laughs> like i remember i used to do meet and greets after shows and like they would be carrying people in yeah because it was they were that was their night to party right and they would you know it was kind of like early when we'd and they would do an edible and they're like my friend can't stand because he didn't eat anything for 36 hours and then he had an edible <laughs> two and people he, at my show two people at the last denver run i did one guy uh, uh fell uh, passed out on edibles and they had to escort him out and then the guy in the front row was on mushrooms and barely could make it through the sh- through the show and did he just like I gotta get out of here? No, he was trying. He was really working at it. I would I talked to him for a little bit, and joked around because I was like, "Are you okay?" Because he really he's right in the front and he kept shifting, and <laughs> oh, I was like, shit. "Oh my god!" But it ended up being a kind of a fun part of the show. But also, uh, Denver parties. Those guys know how to fucking get down. Are you doing sets while you're in town? By the way, I I did one last night. Maybe tomorrow I might. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Why? What are, are you doing a spot? I'm gonna go tonight? doing a couple spots later tonight, but I, I was wondering if you you're go, gonna pop go, by. Go. Come by. Why don't you no, why don't you, you come by? You go by to the store. You only go to the store. Improv and store. You do them both. Yeah, improv store. Improv I, I, but store. I'll do I do a lot of other shows now in town because during the pandemic, new shows picked up. It it, yeah. it was great. Or they revital it revived old shows that died years ago. Oh wow. And then I started going to Largo. I was really never a yeah. Largo guy and I did a couple and do of shows. Do you live out here where where this studio is, or where do you live? 
I live in the um, Los Angeles County area. You don't want to give it away. <laughs> no, these people are nuts. Why, They'll come to my house. Why don't you let your wife leave the house? And why does she have a, an ankle bracelet on? Uh, well, that's because of a crime she committed in 08. She right. vehicular manslaughter, and they've got to keep a monitor on yeah, her. Yeah, but she was on a scooter. I Big mean, that's... deal. You you kill, you kill, you kill. That's what I keep saying to her. And, but she was like carrying a knife. Why would you carry a knife when you're on a scooter? She's a chef. She was a chef. All right, fine. What? <laughs> your honor. Your honor. No, I, li- I do live in the, uh, I live in the valley. I've talked about that. We're in the valley. I live in the valley. I'm a valley guy now. Is it true that your wife This is had... Long Island for you. Would this, is it true that your wife had elf ears attached to her ears so that she would look like a little elf? Did you read my w- Wikipedia? Is that on there? How do you know that? I don't know. I just, you know, people That's a little suspect that, oh, are people chatting about it? People are chatting about it on the interweb. On what website? It's called web.com. No. Is is this sponsored by stamps.com? <laughs> it, it, no, it's not. No, but I do want to get stamps because I do know that was like Mark Maron's stamps is longest a good one. running. Stamps has got money. There's money in stamps. What's your favorite city to perform in? By the way, I'm in Chicago, three shows. But go on. What are you in Chicago? I am. What are you, what are you doing? I'm doing the competing theater that you're in. No, I'm in uh April. But what show, what theater? Chicago Theater. Oh, you are doing the Chicago Theater. I yeah. I've oh. never done Rosemont Horizon. Why not? That's perfect for you. It's so funny. It's like, I I always thought that it, I didn't know anything about it. And then I talked to a comedian. They're like, it's amazing. You should do it. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, it's great. But, it's, it's awesome. I can't believe you haven't done that. I'm surprised that you just do Chicago. Because you have to do four shows? I Yeah, I don't know. But I like the Chicago Theater. And I like, you know, I've got a lot of friends and family there. So, All right, I'll be there. All right. Um, my favorite city to perform is probably... Where are you performing? Name one of those. Oh, you know, right now I'm in Atlanta and I love Atlanta. I love Washington, D.C. tomorrow night. And then (laughs) (laughs) my favorite city, Boston has shown me an unbelievable amount of love that shocked me. I I, I thought it was going to be great. But um, I do love going back home. Boston's an amazing comedy. It's so amazing for comedy. Also because there wasn't, I mean, different from your era of when I think back then there was like two clubs that were there or there was two, right? Yeah, I mean, when I was, there was the Comedy Connection, but like... 16, 12, or 16, what was that, 16, 13? Back 16, 13, right before yeah. we established, I was there when they established Harvard. <laughs> I was like, how about this? <laughs> and they're like, uh, okay. Oh no, Jim. But yeah, no, Boston. Boston is... has changed my, I love that city as a city. Yeah. And then when I went there and, and did... A couple of shows at Wilbur. I was like, "This is the greatest." What about Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's a fun city. Have yeah, you done that. Yeah, no, no. Pitts is good. Uh, Philly's great. Um, New York was scary, and I played Town Hall recently, and I New York was always so scary to me. It's just unfamiliar. Well, but just be no. It's just because everybody's there. Like you guys are all there. Yeah. And like L. A. is all of us, and like it's just like when somebody from out of town comes and does an L. A. show. I always think it's funny when somebody comes and does the Will Turn, like a New York yeah. guy. I don't know. It's our backyard. It's just strange yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like when I went to New York, I was like seeing all my New York friends. It feel, felt weird, but it was it was cool because I was just, I was like, are people going to fucking show up in New York? I did Town Hall. When I did Town Hall, it was actually the Town Hall. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> it was <laughs> actually, what it was? they were like, it was the only hall they had. Yeah. In the in whole town. city. In town. And uh, they were like, you know what? I remember it was my idea. I was like, you know what? Instead of calling it a town, why don't we call it a city? And they're like, don't be ridiculous. Are I'm you like, sure? Is that, that was your idea? It's my idea. When you said don't be ridiculous, what did I think of? There's only one, one that phrase. Don't, oh, don't be ridiculous. Come on, who said that? Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. Come on, man. Oh, wait a minute. Is that, uh, is that cheeseburger, cheeseburger? No, come no. on, baby. Don't come on, you know. Ri- don't don't be, ridiculous. be ridiculous. I, give I you don't a hint. know. Bronson Pinchot. Oh, is uh, Stranger Things and, uh, or whatever? Well, no, not Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect Strangers. <laughs> Perfect Strangers? No, that was him in Beverly Hills Cop to Eddie Murphy. Oh, God, don't he... be ridiculous when he's oh in the God, art store. He was so amazing. Phen- you know, Perfect Strangers is one of my favorite shows that you mentioned. So he got Perfect Strangers because of that. I don't know if that's vice versa. I think it might be flipped. I think he... Really? Wait, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> See, like, if you were... By the way, when you're when this takes off, you're going to be able to turn to someone and go, look that up, Timmy. Yeah, right, yeah. Right? No, with Joe, it's uh, Jamie, pull that up. We yeah. used to have helper producers in here, but because of Rona, I we stopped having people in here. 
Wow. My whole thing was I want to keep people, feel people safe that if it was in the middle of doing shows and Corona and touring, I was always like, it's just me and you. Right. So if you get sick or it's if I get sick, we know who did it. You call it Rona. I call it COVID. Yeah, that's an East Coast, West Coast thing. That's, you know, it's like the rivalry is insane. It's huge. It's, it's huge. It's so insane. Jim, um, I want, first of all, I want to thank you so much. I, I admire you. I respect you. I appreciate you. I think you're a great man, a great comic. And, um, oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, I was going to give you another compliment, but I don't, I, that's it. I think I don't want to no, give you I any just, more. I'm just so thrilled to be able to talk to Bill Burr's brother. You know, it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> go see Jim. He's on tour right now. Uh, if you want to go see him, his website is, of course, jimgaffigan.com. Dot com. Jimgaffigan.com? Jimgaffigan.com. But also. But also go to andrewsantino.com and then and and go to my shows first and then maybe go yeah, to his. Go to you have to go to Andrew's show. Go to my show. Chicago. In and Chicago. then Go to my one of your five show. shows in Chicago. Uh, watch Comedy Monster. It's right now. It's available on Netflix. It's um, it's Jim's worst work, but it's it's it doesn't matter at this point. It's it. I mean, I don't want to say that it cures Corona, but do you think so? I think it might. <laughs> if you watch the special, you might it might stop the pandemic. This I'm is, just saying this was a Trump pitch. I mean, the CDC said that <laughs> you watch a special, he cures Rona. Trump pitched it. I tried this thing. It's this thing. Jim, Jim, you know Jim. He's a big Jim, big Jim. <laughs> um, watch Comedy Monster right now, available on Netflix. Go see Jim on tour. Jim, look into that camera right there. We end the episode yes. every way, every the same way. Uh, one word or one phrase to end the episode. Make it count. Happiness. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. <laughs>